Counseling is important to me because, well, I want the patient to be healthy. That's our number one goal. Like we want them to be, be to get better. So, for them to uh, properly take their medication, that's the fastest way they're going to get better. What do you think is important to cover during counseling? Uh, well, I think it's important for patients to know um, exactly what they're taking. They want to make sure they don't have any allergies or interactions to the medications. Um, they want to make sure they're taking the medication correctly because a lot of the times that will lead to problems in itself. I think that side effects certainly are, are very important to cover. Uh, and, and if the medication needs any specific storage information, then the patient needs to be informed of that. What types of questions should a patient ask during counseling? Uh, patients should ask normally like um, mainly how to take the medications and like um, how, how they're going to, I guess, be affected by the medications, like any kind of adverse side effects um, if that, you know, like if it causes drowsiness, can they, you know, drive while they're taking this medication? I think the patient should should um, make sure that they are understanding what has been explained to them. Uh, some practitioners are really good about talking to patients about their medication, but sometimes the patients get so overwhelmed with information in the in the practitioner's office that they can't remember everything. And, and so when they get to the pharmacy, I feel like our job is to clarify and remind them of that information. Um, and the patient should stop the pharmacist anytime they don't understand what we're explaining to them. Um, the questions that I think that they should have is, is are questions about how to take the medication and, um, and what side effects they might expect uh, if they don't understand what we've explained about that. Why is counseling so important to you? Uh, one really important reason is to make sure that the patient is actually getting the med a medication that they need. Uh, a lot of times patient counseling will allow uh, for something to surface, uh, something like that, like say a patient's getting something that they thought was for a particular condition but it was sp actually supposed to be for something else. How is patient counseling effective in detecting problems with prescriptions? The most common things that, that I feel we are really um, catching in counseling are things like uh, patients um, who feel like they're getting one, either one strength and, and a different one was, was prescribed or they're getting a little bit different medication than they understood they were going to receive. Um, you know, maybe even in this uh, a medication that they had been on before and they thought they were getting the same thing again but the doctor maybe changed it a little bit. Um, those are things that, that are really easy to catch in counseling and they're easy not to catch if you don't counsel. Is there common information or set of instructions that you use during counseling sessions? Yes. Whatever I counsel, I verify their name and date of birth, make sure it's the right patient. And then I ask them if they have any chronic medical conditions, because that could affect their medicine. And also if they have any allergies to medications, to make sure they're not allergic to that specific one. And then also if they're taking over-the-counters or herbals to check for interactions. And then I ask them what they know about the drug and what their doctor told them. And then I make sure they know how to take it and um, tell them what to expect. There's something we call CAM. It's like an acronym for any sort of chronic medical conditions they might be on, uh, but they might they may have and, uh, allergies and also other medications. So that's one way to catch like really important information. Hi, I'm April Adams, and today we will examine the Texas State Board of Pharmacy rules on patient counseling. The experts on our panel are Jeannie Wagner, president of the board and Walmart pharmacist, and Gay Dodson, executive director of the board. Thank you both for being here. First, I'd like to discuss how patient counseling fits into the mission of the board. Ms. Wagner, can you please tell us what that is? The mission of the board is the protection of public safety through the regulation of the practice of pharmacy in Texas. What is the purpose of patient counseling and why is it so important? The purpose of patient counseling is to allow the patient or the patient's agent to know exactly what the medication is, what it's for, and hopefully to add to, more, to a more compliant use of that medication. The other reason that's important is that 
Our statistics show that 30 to 50 percent of errors will be caught if a pharmacist does patient counseling. And that means not just talking to the patient, but opening the bottle, looking at the medication, showing the patient what color the medication is. Many times a pharmacist will catch that the wrong medication is in that bottle and you'll avoid having a medication error if you do that. What is involved in patient counseling? The rules specify that a pharmacist is required to provide information to the patient about their prescription drug. And that information, uh, there are several examples in the rule, but it's based upon the pharmacist's judgment about what is important on this particular drug for this particular patient. So the pharmacist should give information like the name of the drug, the strength, you know, how often should they take it, what kind of side effects they can may experience while they're taking it. What do they do if they miss a dose? Just simple questions like that. Also, you need to remember to ask open-ended questions during that counseling session with the patient or the patient's agent in case that you want to ensure that you are getting the right prescription delivered to the correct patient or patient's agent because they might come to the window and you might say, is, is your name Ms. Smith? Is this for Mrs. Smith? And they may say yes when in entirely it's not for them. So always ask, who are you picking it up for? Also, according to what Ms. Dodson said, be sure that you uh, tailor that counseling information to the level of that the patient will be able to understand and comprehend. When is a pharmacist required to counsel a patient? The rules specify that pharmacists must counsel on all new prescriptions. And we define a new prescription as a prescription for a drug that the, in the same strength and the same dosage form that the patient has not taken within the last year. Uh, this would also include counseling on refills at least once a year. The other thing is if a patient asks you a question, you need to answer that question. So if they, they want information, by all means, make sure you give that information to the patient. We have also changed the rules to require when a patient gets a refilled prescription, a patient or a pharmacy technician or a uh, clerk can ask the patient, do you have any questions about that prescription? If you do, the pharmacist is available to talk to you. So even though it's not a new prescription, the opportunity is there for the patient to ask questions of the pharmacist. And are pharmacies required to have a specific area for patient, patient counseling? Yes, the rules say that every pharmacy has to have an area that is suitable for patient counseling. And what we're looking for under suitable is, is it in an area that will allow for confidentiality when you're talking to that patient? You don't want it generally to be near a cash register because patients tend to gather at the cash register because they want to get out just as soon as they can. So if you can avoid putting it near the cash register, that would be the best thing. But the most important thing is that other patients or other pharmacy personnel cannot hear what you are talking to that patient about. They need that privacy. And if a group tends to gather at the counseling window because they're in such a hurry to get out and you maybe have four or five people that need to be counseled, and if they, if they gather too close to that individual that you're dealing with at the window, uh, what you need to do is just ask them kindly to step back and that you will be with them just as soon as possible. But you want to provide that privacy to that patient or that patient's agent. Is a pharmacy required to make a reference book containing prescription drug information available for use by the public? Yes, the rules do require that they make available to the public, and this means available without them having to ask. So it should, if it's a hard copy book, it needs to be on the prescription counter. You can also provide it in an electronic means if you have a computer that is accessible to the patient. It can't be on a computer back in the pharmacy because obviously you wouldn't want the patient to come into the pharmacy to be able to use that. But it needs to be available to the patient and it needs to be in lay language. An example of that is the pill book. You would want that in the latest edition. You want that accessible to the patient, preferably right there at the counseling area, and also it can be a paperback. Is a pharmacy required to post a sign about patient counseling? Yes, the rules require that a sign be, be posted in the pharmacy uh, no smaller than 8.5 by 11, so that's a regular sheet of paper. And that sign needs to say, if you have questions about your prescription, ask the pharmacist.
Is written information required to be given to patients? Yes, written information is required to be given at the time of the, the counseling at the window or at the area that you have designated that. And you need to provide that in uh, readable language, lay language that is no smaller than 10 point times Roman. Also, if you have a compounded prescription, you want to use the most active ingredient in the compound to counsel to have that information provided to the patient. If you have a new drug that does not have in the software not updated to provide that information at this time, it is okay not to give it to them, uh, but you need to document that. And at a later time when that is accessible, like on a refill, you would provide that to the patient and, or the patient's agent. An example of that would be like when a drug goes from brand to generic, a lot of times that's not readily available at that current moment, but it will be available and at that time, it's a good time to inform the patient that that drug has gone to, to a generic, it's going to look different, and also that we will be, be providing information later. Or you can also use the brand information, at least get the information off of it that gives you side effects so that patient will be informed at that time. Can written information substitute for verbal counseling? It does not substitute. It is required to supplement patient counseling when the patient is there at the pharmacy. If the prescription is delivered to the patient at home, obviously you're not talking to them, but you have to provide that information. And there's some additional information we require to be provided. And that is a sheet or a label that says, written information about the prescription has been provided for you. Please read this information before you take the medication if you have questions concerning this prescription, the pharmacist is available during normal business hours and you need to give those hours on that sheet and give them a phone number where they can reach that pharmacist to ask questions. Can a pharmacy technician or a clerk make an offer to counsel? The only time an offer to counsel is allowed, if it's a new prescription there is no offer, the pharmacist is supposed to counsel. But if it's a refill, the rules now say that a pharmacy technician or clerk may tell the patient that if you have questions about your prescription, a pharmacist is available to answer those questions. If the pharmacist is busy, can a clerk or pharmacy technician counsel the patient? And can the pharmacist tell the patient that they will call them later? Only a pharmacist or a pharmacist intern can provide the counseling. It needs to be done at that moment that the prescription is being picked up. The only, option, the only exception would be like when a patient is not there, the patient's agent's picking up, and they would like the information conveyed to that patient, and maybe they would ask you to call. You can certainly offer to call uh, and also make, make it at that time. Some other times that a patient may ask you to call later is if for some reason they don't want to talk about it, it's a confidential matter or it's something they don't want anybody to have the chance to hear and they would be more comfortable if you call them. If they ask you to call, you certainly can do that. If the pharmacist is not present when the patient picks up the prescription, then what needs to happen? In most cases, the when the pharmacist is not present, the pharmacy or the prescription department is closed. Uh, however, there are two exceptions in the rule that will allow prescriptions to be delivered when uh, the pharmacist is not there. And those exceptions are if the pharmacist is on a lunch break. Uh, and still within the facility. During that time, there's certain things that a technician can do in the pharmacy, and one of those things is to deliver prescriptions that have already been processed and checked by the pharmacist. There is a log that has to be kept when they do that, and that is, list that is in the rules. The second time this can happen is during two hours, during a 24-hour period. Generally, this will occur after the pharmacy is closed, Two hours after that, patients can pick up prescriptions provided there is a technician there who's used to dealing with those patients. And again, that log has to be maintained and they have to provide the written information just like a delivered prescription. Now, what if a patient refuses counseling? If a patient refuses counseling, that has to be documented, but it's also an opportunity to use the time if the patient says, at the, like it's example, if they're at the cash register and they say, I don't need to be counseled, I've had it so many times, the best way to do that is for the, the 
uh, clerk or the, the technician to hand it and say, well, the pharmacist will bag this for you. And again, use this as another opportunity to check it one more time to make sure you're getting the right drug to the right patient and to uh, give them another opportunity in case they have questions because many times they will say, well, I don't have a question about this, but I have a question about something else I'm taking. What does the board look for, look for during inspections with regard to patient counseling? During inspections, most likely the inspector is going to look for any records you have made. So they're going to look for records of patients saying they didn't want to counsel. Now, if we have every patient say they didn't want to counsel, we're going to question you on that because that's just not realistic. Uh, they also may look at the prescriptions that are waiting for pickup to see if you have identified the ones that are required to have counseling where there's many times they'll stamp new on that or something that will alert the um, cashier that the pharmacist has to talk to you. Um, those are the types of things we're looking for. We'll also observe the pharmacist counseling, uh, make sure that is happening, and that may happen before they even introduce themselves to you. What are the recent changes to patient counseling rules? Just recently, we have uh, changed the rules to require documentation of the name of the pharmacist that counsels the patient. We want to know who is that pharmacist that is responsible. Uh, and that documentation has to include the prescription number, the name of the patient, the date, and the name or the initials of the pharmacist that counseled. That information can be recorded on the hard copy prescription, it can be on the hard copy log that the pharmacy keeps, an electronic log, uh, are just in a manual book uh, where they keep that information. Uh, but that we need to know who it is that counts with the patient. And many times we're asked, do they have to, do you have to document that immediately? And the answer to that is no. You want to do it as quickly as possible. But you might have five customers lined up, patients, to get their, pick up their prescriptions and they want to get out in a hurry. So be sure you do it as quickly as you can, but it does not have to do have to be done immediately when you counsel that patient. Do these rules apply to Class E out of state pharmacies? Yes, they do. They are required to follow the same rules that any pharmacy in Texas or a Class A pharmacy would be required as far as if the patient is in the pharmacy, they are required to counsel. In most cases, for the mail service pharmacies or the Class E, the patients are not there in the pharmacy. So they have to comply with the same rules that a Class A pharmacy in Texas would have to comply with when they deliver a patient, a prescription to a patient's home. Okay, I think that wraps up our discussion, but is there anything else that you'd like to add about the importance of patient counseling? I don't think we can emphasize too often how important it is to counsel that patient. This is the time that the patient will learn about the drug, hopefully learn that it's important to take those drugs. So use that opportunity to educate your patients. And also use it as an opportunity to provide that trust factor that our profession has so long had in its, its favor. So that way the patient knows that you care about them and, be, and have empathy toward them. I think that's one of the biggest things that counseling also, besides the compliance, besides correcting, checking for errors, and making sure the right medicine, the right patient, just let them know that you care. And I think that that will sum up what all counseling is really worth. Aside from its requirement by the board, why do you do patient counseling? I think it's important for us to do patient counseling just to make sure that the patient knows how to take their medication. Uh, adherence is probably the number one, um, I guess, problem with, with drugs. Uh, it's important for patients uh, to be educated on what they're taking. I mean, nobody wants to be taking a, a medication blindly. You know, it, 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 um, it's important to know what you're taking, how it's going to affect your body, and it's, uh, it's important for a person to have control over that. I do patient counseling because that is the part of pharmacy that I love. And um, that is my passion is to make contact with patients um, and, um, and get feedback from them about you know their their uh, condition or their you know concerns about taking their medication uh, to me the patient contact is the most important thing TSBP would like to thank you for watching this video and as always be sure to visit our website for any additional information about the agency